Check up on the styles of the boxers. Well, they're both brawlers and, and punchers. I, I look for a, a, a sort of puncher's bout. I mean, it, it could be a stalemate or it could be a blazing fight. And we won't know that till the bell rings. They're, they're not exactly well-known quantities, either one of them. Any thoughts on how it'll unfold from the opening bell? I think it'll unfold as a battle. I mean, as a battle battle, not, not as a technical battle. All right, William Joppy is a perfect 19-0 with 15 wins via the knockout route. He is only ranked number seven by the NABF, but number three by the WBA and number two by the IBF. He comes off a win in April, a 10-round decision over Joaquin Velasquez in Landover, Maryland. The Maryland Golden Gloves champ qualified for the 1992 U.S. Olympic trials. He emulates the style of Leonard, Hagler, and Duran. We'll find out tonight if he has any of the qualities of those great champions. a little nervous and says he is nervous before a fight but once he gets in there it goes away when he looks at his opponent he doesn't think about anything but the game plan confidence takes over a big Sugar Ray Leonard fan William Joppy if osmosis really works in the fight game Rodney Tony should be a good fighter He's a stable mate and sparring partner of Terry Norris and the second cousin of former world super middleweight champion James Lights Out Tony. Plus his father Harold Combs fought professionally as a middleweight in Ohio. His only loss was to Quincy Taylor. He's ranked number six by the NABF, number 10 by the WBC. He was efficient and impressive in his last fight, a first round knockout of Felipe Roca in Tijuana. Record of 21, 1 and 2. Comes off that KO over Felipe Rocha. He's got a good left jab and a solid right hand. Right now, let's look at the tail of the tape, and you can see these fighters are very even. Tony 27, Joppy 25. Tony 5 9, Joppy 5 10. Tony 160, Joppy 157. Joppy has a slight reach advantage. Rules of the North American Boxing Federation govern the fight. 10-point must scoring system, three judges score. No standing eight, three knockdown rule is in effect. Only the ref can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the last round. And if there's an accidental foul before the start of the fourth, the fight will be ruled a no decision. If it happens after the start of the fourth, they go to the scorecards. So it is time for our last bout of the evening here at the Mirage, the tropically themed property with an indoor rainforest. And now we'll find out if a storm is brewing in the grand ballroom as Tony takes on Joppy for the NABF middleweight title. Once again, our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr.
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we present the fourth of our championship bounce of tonight, the NABF Middleweight Championship, brought to you by Don King Productions and King Vision, along with Corona Beer, Showtime Event Television, and The Mirage. This bout coming your way is sanctioned by the North American Boxing Federation, the President Mario La Traverse, the Supervisor Luis Escalona, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the Chairman Dr. James Nave. Introducing to you the judges for this bout, Art Lurie, Dave Moretti, and Al Siciliano. Introducing to you our referee in charge of this bout, Joe Cortez. All right, fans, here we go with the vacant NABF Middleweight Championship scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing white trunks with black trim and fighting out of Rockville, Maryland. He weighed in at the middleweight limit of 160 pounds even, and his record is unblemished as a professional with 19 wins, no losses, and 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the NABF number seven rated contender, introducing the undefeated William Joppy Jr. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner of this 12-round championship bout, wearing gray trunks with black trim. He is representing the First Fighters Squadron in Campo, California, by way of Boston, Massachusetts. He weighed in at a trim and ready 157 pounds, and his fine record includes 21 wins, only one defeat, two draws, and 13 wins, coming by way of knockout. Introducing the NABF number six rated middleweight, how about a hand for Rodney, the Punisher, Tony. Once again, here's a referee in charge, Joe Cortez. All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want a good, clean fight. Protect yourselves at all times. Shake hands, good luck to both of you. Vacant NABF middleweight title. A look at William Joppy, the Eddie Mustafa Muhammad lookalike. Had his opponent, Rodney Tony. Joe Cortez, third man in the ring, 19 years as a pro ref, third year in Las Vegas, born and raised in New York City. Joppy in the white trunks, Rodney Tony in the gray trunks. Remember, Joppy can punch. I mean, he's got devastation. He's like Eddie Gregory. He's, he looks like him, he fights like him, he can punch. Whoa! And quickly landing oh. was Tony. Tony comes from a punching family, too. I, I think this is going to be a, a little land battle going on here. 13 KOs for Tony, 15 KOs for Joppy. And Joppy try to stick that jab out. And now it's Tony who doubles up with the jab. Tony punching much harder. Like if he wants to get this out of here and, and leave along with the crowd. They, they want to get some action going. Tony is from a good... Uh, squadron there. It's with Terry Norris's camp and uh, boy they work out in that place. Ooh, nice right hand. And a good counter to the body get him out, by get him out of there, get him out of there. Tony dropped that right hand like he knew what he was doing. There it goes again. Big right hand that time by Tony. Joppy trying to equal it out by landing something equally hard but not having the same success. There he goes with that his right hand. Joppy's right hand didn't really get through. These guys look like they're fighting a mirror. I mean, they're both doing the same thing. And they're both starting out with a little bit of verb. Oh, yeah. No, they're punchers. They don't like to hang around for the, for the decision. Good crisp jab landed by Tony. And you know, Ferdy, it's tough to wait back there and be iced at the end of a long evening and, and come out and be ready when you see a fighter not sweating early, you, you wonder. Let him out, let him out, hey, these let him guys out, have been back there since 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's now uh, our time uh, after 9. So, I mean, they've been there a long while and getting anxious. So they want to come out here and get this thing going. Both of them have started fairly well. M more punishment handed out by the Punisher, Tony. That's what he's got written on his gray trunk. The Joppy was having a little bit harder time finding his target. 
Matt Tony with the jab, following it up with the right hand. Good, solid shot to the body by Tony. Yeah, after a shot to the head. I mean, he, he's fighting well. Oddly enough, he's landing the harder punches and the better punches, and Joppy looks like a cleaner, finer, more polished fighter, but he's not doing as well. And both of these guys look like they're in excellent physical condition, that very taut. That they do. They, they really look like they're in shape for this. After all, this is a championship fight. You can't get in shape for that. You better get, no, get, get him out. Get him out. Get him out. Break Final break seconds break of round break number break. one. Time! And an action filled first round. Tony a little stronger. You got to close your gap a little bit faster. Pick it up a little bit more. Pick it up a little bit more. See, you ain't slipping enough when you're bagging up with your hands out. Okay? Put them up. Yeah, put them up. That's why the right yeah, hand got through. That's the only reason why the right hand got through. Put your hand, put your hands back up. Uh, fire your hard jab. Don't be stuck laying that thing out there, pitter pat. Okay? Take, take his heart out, baby. That's all okay. you gotta do. We're doing it already. Yeah. You letting him know he's in for it. Okay? Okay. Just relax, take your time. Good job, man. Very relaxed corner work by both, both sides. Janks Morton, who's been with Sugar Ray Leonard for a long time, gave very good Stay advice. You're going Don't straight back. Get that's up. why you got hit by the right hand, and that's exactly what was right. He went back. The guy was throwing the right hand, and he was going back, and it landed flush. Not once, but several times. And in listening to both fighters talk to us yesterday, Tony, a Hagler fan, hailing from Boston, Joppy from Maryland, a Leonard fan. So we've got a very interesting matchup yeah. in that respect. Yeah, that's, I never thought of that. See how it takes to prepare. <laughs> Ooh, a little bit of a left hook off the movement there by Tony. Yeah, Tony's corner is, is telling him, just like hey, his trunk say, taking back. his heart back. out, punish him. I mean, you know, no fancy boxing talk, just like wear him out, hit him. Again, the punisher throwing that left hook. Joppy's quick. Yeah, he is. But he's still doing exactly what Janks Morton told him not to do, which is hold his hands down low and, and come back straight back out after a punch instead of weaving and keeping your hands up. And uh, that's how he got hit by the right hand. That hasn't happened yet, but uh, it isn't going to be long because Tony likes to throw that right, especially after he's hit home with it several times. Right now, they're just trading jabs. Choppy's still learning 32 because he didn't turn amateur until he was 20, and pro 22, he's only 25. You know, he certainly has enough moves for a guy with that little experience. I mean, he, he does look very good. Well, according to J.D. Brown, he makes up for his lack of experience with hard work and dedication. Good body shot landed by Tony. Hey! Bring out, bring out, bring out, step back. Step back, step back. Now, I think you're right. Both guys, it's really a mirror image situation, but a little more power in the hands of Tony. Yeah, and a little bit more finesse in the hands of Joppy. But that's not winning in this fight, unfortunately, right now. But it's a long way to go. Power right now is winning. Ah, there's a good right, heart, right hand, but it landed high on the shoulder. But at least he threw it hard. Give it's been the jab. It's been the jab and a little bit of a left hook by Tony. Joppy's pun punching much harder now. He's settling down to punch hard now. Joppy landing the right hand. And another. And now he's got Tony retreating. Right, Tony doesn't look good. Tony doesn't look good in a boxing sense. I mean, he doesn't look like a fine finished fighter. Joppy looks good. And... Uh, Especially in that last little retreat that he just pulled. He just looked very amateurish doing that. Good uppercut by Joppy. And the left hook got in there by the Punisher. Then he lost his balance on, and on, just on, tried on, to grab him. I thought he was going to spin himself into a top there. Joppy finding the range. So two rounds complete in this vacant NABF middleweight title fight. Let's go to Jim Gray. All right, Bruce, I'm with Terry Norris. Terry, your thoughts on your performance tonight? It looked like you were in complete control. 
Um, well, I feel there's a uh, room for improvement. I right now I feel like, hey, I did good. I won the fight, and um, you know, my next outing I'll be out in November. I don't know who I'll be fighting, but um, you want to unify the division, though, don't you? I definitely, I want to unify the division and um, and move up to middleweight or move down to uh, to welterweight. Terry, congratulations. Great to see you. All right, thank you. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Let's go back to Bruce. Okay, Jim. That was a wild swing there in the second round, Ferdy. Yeah, let's take a look at it. Let's see what happens. This is when you throw everything you got in your feet are not in right shape. Look, look at his feet parallel. Whoop! He was a, looks like some like, like an imitation of one of those drunks that you see in the Hollywood movie. No, well, we talked about the fact that Joppy didn't start fighting until he was older. Meanwhile, Tony started fighting at age 12, but then he lost interest and didn't come back until he was age 20. So two guys that are just uh, finding themselves as professionals. And both with good records. Joppy a perfect 19-0. Joppy looking much more comfortable. He's dictating tempo now. Yeah, now it looks like he put some order into the house. You know, before they were fighting, and now he says, oh, wait a minute, let's, let's box. Let me show you how to do this. And Tony's not looking good. He's, he's looking amateur. Unless he gets, look, look those are amateur punches. Unless he gets lucky and hits him right on the banana. Jop is uh, winning the battle of the uh, technique here. Tony lost the fight to Quincy Taylor for that NABF title. Cut over the left eye, and the referee had to stop the bout with 90 seconds left in the 12th round. I don't, I don't want any holding. I don't want any holding, guys. Give me a clean round. Joe Cortez warns against holding. I haven't seen too much holding. I haven't either. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was looking at the other fight. Chopping get him right by get him Joppy. Break, break out, break out clean, break out, step back. Or is that a, jo a Joppy right by a Joppy? <laughs> Well, one, one thing I can tell you is the heart is there in in Tony, but not the skills of Joppy. Well, if Joppy can keep this a boxing match, he's in good shape. Yeah, I mean, they start out to be a bombs away, as I predicted, and then all of a sudden it settled down into Joppy inflicting his superior style on a guy that doesn't know how to handle it. And that right hand has been very prevalent let go, let go, let go. in this round especially. Oh, nice, nice hook. hook. Oh, what a nice hook that was by Joppy. There's the jab, a stiff one by Joppy. And a wild miss by Tony. Right now, Tony's got no fluidity in his, in his bounce. Uh, and, he's, and he's fighting like he's confused. Like, like you know, I, I don't quite know how to do this. <laughs> Whereas the other guy's been posed his order on there. He has just, he waits for him to miss, and he comes back and he punches. Look at this. Joppy remains extremely busy. There's the jab. He's looking to unleash that right hand. And effectively busy. I mean, he's, he, he is the, the aggressor, and he's effective when he's the aggressor. It isn't a big beating, but he's piling up points. Joppy's been very efficient in this round, the fourth, the third, I should say. That jab can be just a pest. Five. Third round in the books. He's already getting tired. The only thing you have to do is just go back to your combination, okay? Uh -huh. the two jabs, right hand, two jabs, right, right hand. And that's all you have to do, just add to him. I mean, he's, he's reaching all over for you. The only way, only way when, when you look bad, you know, is when you, look, when you don't throw any punches, okay? You gotta throw punches, you gotta stay busy. You want, you want, the, you want, the, you want the belt, you gotta work for it, okay? Okay, okay. Come on, okay, babe. let's go with it. You wanna get it, okay, babe. Let the hand stay up. Let the hand stay up. All right? How are you feeling? You gotta keep forcing it. Speed back. He gives up. He gives up. He gives up when you force him to fight. Right? Keep putting the pressure on. Put the pressure on. Let that pressure go. Come on. Keep the pressure. Come on. Come on. Jags Martin, right? very accurate in his uh, instructions. You gotta keep pressure on. When you keep pressure on, this guy doesn't know what to do, and he's right. And Jags is a very, very good corner man. He's a good trainer. Tough disciplinarian. A little extra time in that yeah. corner of Tony, a little extra Vaseline in the face of Tony. Uh, I know. 
there wasn't that much Vaseline and, and what difference does it make? The first two or three punches and he goes away. Vacant NABF middleweight title on the line. It was vacated by Quincy Taylor when he won the WBC title on August 19th. Rodney Tony number six in the NABF. William Joppy number seven. Ranked higher by the IBF number two and number three by the WBA. Well, I'm having all kind of weird uh, sensations watching this Joppy fight. Looks just like Eddie Gregory when he was young. I, I've known Eddie since he was a kid, and he looks like him as a young man. And <laughs> wow! And he's fighting with like with his hand down and with a lot of cockiness. He's fighting like Eddie did. This kid prefers to to box a little more, maybe. Well, Eddie was a fine boxer and uh, could punch like crazy. Tony goes to the body. Tony's got to do something to start pick up where he left off in the first round. First round he was beating up on him and now he's done done. Good right hand. Long distance but good right hand. Tony getting more aggressive and this is what you wanted from him, Ferdy. Yep, he's got to do this or else he's going to get picked apart by a superior technician. He's got to turn it into a brawl. He's got to stay close to Joppy. He can't, he can't run, can he? No, no. He, he cannot try to outthink this kid. He's got to try to slug him. And good right. I mean, left uh, hook by t uh, the Punisher, Tony. And that, that's what he's got to do. He's, he's, he's got to put some heavy leather in there. Better round for Tony here in the fourth. And still not a great round, by the way. I mean, it was a better round, but the other rounds were zippers for him. Zeros. Joppy staying up on his toes. Trying to pick his spot. Landing solid body blows. Good combination. See, when, when you hear that kind of sound, Big point builders. You know, so many fighters talk about, I want this title, I want that title. Joppy is realistic. He says, I want to have enough money so I can start my own business, own a house, and enjoy life. What a good guy he is. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Give him credit for honesty. Joppy got him in the corner. Didn't make him pay. Now we saw the Punisher throw a jab. He's doing much better, no question about it. It's the Punisher. Tony. A warning from Cortez and that last punch to the body was borderline around the belt. Yeah, on the hip too, where it doesn't hurt. Big right hand attempted by Tony. And he got creamed on the way back by a double body shot by uh, Joppy. Again, unloading wildly is Tony. That's, his, that's all he can do. Don't go in with your hands down like that. You know what I'm saying? Go in with your hands down like that. No, no, one shot, Jabby. Be smart. That's all you got. Hello, guys. Going there wild like that. You don't have to hit the home run let's, yet, all right? Let's take a look at that big time, haymaker man. from Tony. You know, he, he throws with fruit. Look how far that goes. <laughs> that describes a huge arc. And uh, by the time it lands, the other guys had a time to read the paper. Watch this again. Just look at a complete arc. See, that's a half semicircle. It just went bang. And when it, by the time it hit, the other guy was moving out of the way and had no effect, except on the judge's opinion. Tony likes Holyfield's movement as a big man, Hagler's toughness, and Sugar Ray Robinson's speed. And Muhammad Ali's bank account. Round five, scheduled for 12. Vacant NABF middleweight title here at the Mirage in the Grand Ballroom in Las Vegas. Well, because of, of the um, increasing effort by uh, Tony that last round, I gave it to him by very slim margin, and unofficially they're, they're even, 38 to 38. But since this is kind of ebbing and flowing here without too much big action, it could be any which way you look at it. I mean, it could really be, if you like excellent boxing, it could be Joppies ahead three rounds to one. Tony's done a much better job in the last round or so on, on picking off that jab of, of Joppy. And, and he's punching harder and landing. I mean, but he just stopped fighting there in round two and three. But now he's back to fighting a little bit. And flexing the jab. Wild right hand from Joppy. And it landed right on the side where he aimed it. All right, bring out, bring out, bring out clean. Man, watch the head. What's coming Both in with the these guys you really got? take that right hand back a long way. That's not textbook, is it? No, it's certainly not. 
They don't teach you that. Jockey's got a jab. He threw one there. Would you like to see him double up on that jab? I'd like to see him try something other than just leaving an isolated jab out there. I'd like to see a right hand behind him. I'd like to see a hook following somewhere along the line. <clears throat> He's fighting a very uninspired fight right now. And Tony continues to pick off punches and he lands the left hook. Might be his best punch, that left hook. Now Joppy goes back to the body. And there's oh. a punch to the head. Good combination. Joppy finally getting busy. Yeah, and looking good. Looking like he might let him out, let him have damage Tony. Let him out, let him out, but watch the hole. Watch the hole in that head. Let's go. At least it was a flurry of activity, which is more than he's been doing. He's back in action here. With all, and he's throwing that big long right of, of his own, Joppy. And now he counters with the right hand. Yeah, just, just as he was coming in, as uh, the Punisher was coming in, it was a great idea. It just didn't land right. Well, had it land right? Just as he was coming in, he threw the right hand. I don't know how much power he has in that right hand, but it's efficient. Well, I tell you what, this guy's knocked everybody out. I mean, he's got a big knockout record, and uh, he, he must have some kind of power in that. He's just, they're just not doing damage to each other. They're not hurting each other. They might as well be playing tennis or badminton here. They're just hitting each other, but not hard. Tony countering. Gotten a lot more quiet in this fifth round. There you go. Nice combination Time. by Jumping. Well, there's a couple of exciting and unusual events coming to pay-per-view in September and October. This time it's for real. Saturday, September 30th, basketball fans get to see Shaquille O'Neal, Hakeem Olajuwon go head-to-head -head for a $1 million purse in the Taco Bell one-on-one -on -one championship. Live on pay-per-view from the Taj Resort Casino in Atlantic City. Saturday, September 30th, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. The ultimate war on the floor. Also, Nick Van Exel against Kenny Anderson, East-West Challenge, and Joe Smith against Kevin Garnett in the Rookie Challenge. Then on Saturday, October 7th, the World Combat Championship. A no-holds-barred tournament showcasing the world's most outstanding martial arts experts, including Renzo Gracie in eight different fighting disciplines. Live on pay-per-view Saturday, October 7th, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Just throw a combination. That's all we got to do. All right. all right. Bruce Beck, Ferdy Pacheco back at the Mirage in the Grand Ballroom in Las Vegas. This is the vacant NABF middleweight title fight. Round five between Rodney Tony in the gray trunks, William Joppy in the white trunks. Round number six of the scheduled 12-rounder. Well, I'm to think that this is a championship fight. It looks like it's just a, a regular fight on a Tuesday night someplace, but uh, things are heating up a little bit as I think Tony understands he better start getting, this is a better round now. Just as I say that, they really started fighting hard. Joppy was, was dominant in that last round in, in that he attacked and he had good combinations and he was putting everything together. Kind of trading rounds here. The sloppiness of, of Tony sometimes pays off, and he lands uh, oh, when you least it. expect oh, it from an unexpected region. Tony is almost side. better when he's fighting a wild fight. Yeah, well, he should have. That's what he intended to do, come in here flailing and go at it. Bombs away from the beginning, but it settled down into uh, a slugger versus a technician here all of a sudden when, when Joppy decided, I don't want to do that. I, just, I can outbox this guy. I have Joppy ahead now unofficially, and uh, if you ask me who could win this, I really don't know <laughs> now, <laughs> right Tony, now. Tony sticks a jab in there. It seems like if Tony would want to start fighting more aggressively, he would have a, a chance, but can't seem to get him aggressive-minded. And if he gets more aggressive, it smothers that, that boxing plan of Joppy. Yeah, but he doesn't do it. He's trying to kind of be a mirror image of Joppy and box him also, and he's not as good at boxing. He doesn't have the reflexes nor the technique. Tony reaching for the body and then backing up. Tony's going to need a miracle. He's going to need one of those real bombs to land and really hurt Joppy. Body shot by Tony. 
Both these guys up on their toes. Not much on that right hand by Choppy. Janks is hollering, go with your punches, meaning step in with the punch. Step in and keep punching. Hey, up, nice up, right, up, right up. hand landed by Rodney Tony. Yeah, he, he taken four or five shots and then he got a good right hand in. Rodney, the second cousin of James Lights out, Tony. Hey, bring out, bring out. Joppy, who's a boxer, seems pretty content to go inside and trade. Yeah, he, he's, uh, well, I think he's winning the fight and he knows it. I think his corner knows it, so. There's no sense of urgency to this fight. There's, there's a sense of, look, I'm going to keep on doing this fight yeah. when uh, the title. And he's probably right. That time, Tony just snuck a right hand to the head. One of those infrequent punches that Tony lands from time to time. Time. Halfway through this NIBF middleweight title fight. Seven round, we're gonna keep up the pace. He's not hitting you, okay? He's not hitting you. He's throwing at you, and he's missing you every time he throws at you, okay? So he's not hitting you, all right? So don't worry about when he throws, okay? Because he's not gonna hit you, because he't not hitting you. He hasn't been hitting you at all. All right. Am I just living in a surrealistic movie, and, and, or is he watching the same fight? All right. They're putting the all kind of goop do, in his cut. Alert, he's got all kind of lumps and bumps, and he says, that's "Is that hitting me?" That's that. I mean, that's that old joke. Well, somebody's uh, hitting me. You better watch the referee. Too far. All right. Too far. Yeah, you got too far. And work that jab, okay? You got a nice, beautiful jab. You gotta work it, Rodney. Roy Murphy lost the fight the other day because of that. I need to step in. Step in, huh? Yeah, it's definitely a fight which has uh, not fulfilled its promise because Joppy has, has figured out how to fight uh, Punisher without taking any chances. Whoops, slip on the on the ice. So how do you have it scored right now, Ferdy? 58 to 56, uh, Joppy ahead. Could I be concur. even broader. <laughs> I mean, it could be broader. And, but I'm giving Tony the benefit of the doubt a couple of rounds there when he, when he landed strong punches. And there's a jab, and that's what the corner asked Rodney Tony to do. Throw the jab. He's thrown a couple of jabs in this round. Mm, nice shot. Nice shot by Tony. A good hook. But you see, he punches and then he stands back to admire his work. You know, I mean, he, he doesn't continue to punch, which drives cornerman crazy. When you punch real hard, go in and finish. You know. Excuse me, Ferdy. Rodney Tony's mouth is also open, which is a clear sign from a fighter of fatigue. Yeah, well, it's been open for a <laughs> round. Overhand right hand that was kind of wild by Tony. Joppy a little bit bewildered. Tony coming in and leading with the right. Tony doing much better this round. For the simple reason that he's fighting. Joppy doing a little bit too much gazing. Why doesn't he just throw that jab and see what happens? Now Joppy landing a combination. Let's go, let's go, come on. Joppy began his career in 93 with seven straight wins. In 94, he went 10 and 0. So far this year, 2 and 0. A perfect 19 and 0 as a pro with 15 KOs. He's among good handlers and J.D. Brown, Ollie Dunlop, and Jenks Mort. Yeah, he's got a championship corner. All he's got to do is perform inside the ring. Oh, give me a clean round, guys. Joppy with a good one-two. The right hand to the belly was the best punch go, go, of that go, go, go. group. See, and he stayed there and did some more fighting, and that, that's what's so good about uh, Joppy here. He's, when he goes into to fight, he, he stays there and fights a little. So he lands one punch and he goes back to admire his work. Wild missing left hand by Tony. And Joppy made him pay. That's the first good shot that Tony landed. But it did nothing to uh, neutralize all the punches he got in the eyes of the judge. 
So another round for Joppy. When you get close to him, don't get tangled with him, okay? I mean, get your position, get your right back, position, and start punching, man. Go, babe. Fire back. Come back. Come on, man. Relax. Breathe. Come on, punch him. Let's get the title, babe. No, I already sent him back. Well, let's take a look at the end of the of the round. Good action. You, you, but you should see the Joppy doesn't quit punching. He keeps coming on, coming back. No matter what bizarre angle he's presented with, he seems to punch. Because, boy, he was all turned around. And then a good punch at the end of it by Tony. And then take a second look at that. There was What you keep looking at is the fact that Tony keeps on, I mean, that uh, Joppy keeps on fighting no matter what. I mean, he keeps punching from every angle. He must have thrown five, six, seven punches there before he gets clocked. Round number eight of this 12-round NABF middleweight title fight. Rodney Tony in the gray trunks, William Joppy in the white trunks. And a left hook landed by Tony. Joppy every once in a while puts together three, four, five punches. Let him out, let him out clean, let him out clean. Come on. And looks best oh, when he ahead. does that. Yeah, that's that's what's winning him this fight, I think. I mean he's He's, he's much more concentrated and much more uh, smooth in his fighting. The other guy's waiting for the one punch that'll turn the fight around, and sometimes it never comes. Especially when you wait for it. And he's doing a lot of waiting. Bomb landed by Tony. It was a right hand. Crowd getting into it now. That was good action by Tony. I mean, he's, you know, he, he feels like he hurt him and he's trying to jump on top of him. And then Joppy comes back. He wasn't too hurt. Work out there. Work out. Your hands are free. Look at that. Five, six, seven punches thrown by Joppy. Good uppercut with the right Bring hand. Bring out. Thrown Bring out. by William Bring out. Joppy. Let's go. Now you gotta hand it to Tony. He's trying bring hard to bring land bring that one bring punch. Bring He's trying bring hard. Bring it's not happening, but it doesn't keep him from keep on throwing bombs that don't even come close. Ouch, he says. Yes, absolutely. That one stuck with him. And now Joppy's sensing that Tony's in a little bit of trouble. Coming in, getting more aggressive. Good crisp jab thrown by William Joppy. Very seldom you see a boxer reach back when it, when it hurts and so you don't show the other guy that he hurt you. But he, I mean, he must have touched the tip of that rib because he sure went back there and, and uh, caressed it a moment. Tony leaves himself very susceptible to a right hand when he comes charging in there. Yeah, he looks very amateurish when he does that too. He's flailing away and comes in. Another guy stands his ground and pops him. Doesn't look good for Tony. Joppy, 48 and 4 as an amateur, Maryland Golden Gloves champion, qualified for the Olympic trials in 92 in Marquette, Michigan, and lost to Chris Bird. Chris Bird was a good fighter as an amateur. Oh, Joppy landed squarely on the face of Tony. Bring, bring up, bring up, bring up. Come on, get him out of there. Let me hold this out. Let's go. Let's go. And Joppy has controlled these middle rounds. And in so doing, is controlling the fight. He's building up a lead, oh, which may on. be insurmountable. Don't you quit working, all right? Put someone in here. Come on, Joe. Take the towel. I'm gonna tell him. Hold tight, hold tight. How you feel? Good. Now, just keep working. Don't you quit working. It's a championship round, all right? It's a championship round. Let's take a look at that good shot by Joppy. He missed. Ooh, that was a good shot by Tony, actually. Joppy didn't come close to a good shot then, but he received a good shot. Let's take a look at that again, because this is the same thing. Missed. That one is a good one by Joppy. 
This is a different tape than the other one. That was a very good shot by Joppy. Well, they exchange punches. Truly, there's just not anything of real importance happening, except that this guy is slowly losing the fight, Tony. And Joppy is slowly taking control, round after round. He's now ahead, 78 to 74 on my card, unofficially. Mine, too, unofficially. I've given him the last four rounds. What about straight. you, Doc? Yeah, straight. Joppy backing up Tony. That's been a pattern throughout. Cut him out. Oh. Joppy talking about going after a middleweight world championship belt in the future. Quincy Taylor holds the WBC crown. Jorge Castro, the WBA. Bernard Hopkins, the IBF. Joppy, good counter with the right hand. Joppy sees that if he's aggressive and if he's dictating the tempo, the he's not in danger of, of right, getting on, hit by on, one of those bombs on. by Tony. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the nature. That's, that's the character of this fight. As long as he is <clears throat> dominating the action, aggressive, then the other guy is so busy getting away that he doesn't plan himself and, and counter punch or punch much. I mean, if he stops and the other guy comes ahead with those bombs and flailing shots. So his business is just to keep working. I mean, he, what he's looking at is a lot of hard work. And there was an example of the right hand landed by Tony that bothered Joppy. That may be the ugliest piece of boxing in right, this out, decade that we've just started in the 90s. He jumped around and wrapped his hand around him. I can't wait to see that. But he did score with the right hand. <laughs> From around the back of the house. Oh, nice That's a ball. nice cruncher. Yep. Joppy, body blow. And that'll last with you for a while. Into the wee hours of the morning. Short uppercut by William Joppy. Tony with his mouth open. Really looking like a picture of exhaustion in his face. I mean, he really does look like just got hit in the back of the head. Cortez said nothing. Joppy doing a much better job at going to the belly. Just hit him in the back of the head again. Cortez said nothing. Just did it again. Joppy getting in there, mixing it up with Tony. Yeah, he's doing well mixing it up, too. Another right hand landed by Joppy. But he got hit hard <laughs> before he landed it. Tony did get one in. Tony's percentage is not good, but he does land a couple of haymakers. Joppy's just got to be smart now with the lead building bigger oh, as out. each round Step goes back. forward. Time. Don't play with him, all right? Don't play with him now. Uh, come on, too close, fight him. Too close, too close, and up. Don't play with him, all right? Mm -hmm. yeah, good round, you start off real nice, but you start slacking off. Don't play at the end of the round, okay? Get tired like that, don't take much. Get towel under there, man. Right? For you, man. He's Whatever gonna hit you him. Throw, you're gonna hit him. Yeah, two more to go. Anything you throw, you're gonna hit him, Rodney. Come on, man. We gotta get these last, gotta last two rounds, him, man. man. We gotta take it to him. We gotta take it to him. Okay. We gotta win these last two rounds. Come on, babe. He's, you're Suck backing up, him up. Babe. You're backing him up. Let's look at that. Now watch. He goes all the way around. <laughs> all the way around. Now watch this. Now watch this. Whoa. <laughs> that's, that's around from the back of the house. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that in boxing. Well, it must have not uh, done anything but amuse Cortez because he didn't say one thing to him. I guess it's protect your yourself at all times. And we come to round 10. Three rounds to go for this vacant NABF middleweight title fight. William Joppy seemingly building up a commanding lead. Joppy in the white trunks. Rodney Tony in the gray trunks. And there's Tony with a right hand that got okay, through. All right, break, break out clean. He's had several one on, punches that set. landed, whereas Joppy so has been through. in combos. Yep, absolutely. You know, and his um, his corner made one of those uh, mistakes that they make so often. When they get to the tenth round, they tell the fighter there's only two more rounds to go now. But <laughs> there's three more rounds to go. It's the tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. That's very discouraging when you find out that you got one extra round to go when you come back to the corner. 
What? He just told me to. All right. Getting more interesting as he begins to realize he's blowing this thing, Tony, and he's looking for that one hard punch. Oh, that was it. Nice right hand. Nice right hand. And Joppy holding on there, trying to get a little breather. Boy, it was a nice punch, though. That woke him up pretty good. Okay, maybe that had been at the beginning of the fight when he was really punching hard. That would have cleaned out. And a decent Joppy. body blow that snuck in there yeah. by Rodney Tony. Yeah, Tony's, you know, woken up to the fact. After all, he's a, here's a guy that thinks he's only got two more rounds to go. Yeah. <laughs> He's putting forth the effort. He just doesn't have the style. Yeah, skills the other word. Bring it up, bring it up. Come on, guys. I want you holding the side. No need for holding. Let's go. Give me a clean round. These guys have been working for the better part of the fight. Crisp jab by William Joppy landed on the button. Get him out, get him out, get him out, get him out. Come on, get him out. Let's go, get him out. Break, break out. Joppy does have the style and skill, though, on the other hand, doesn't he, Ferdy? Yeah, I do. I think he has the style to become somebody. I mean, he's, he's got a lot to learn. He's only had 19 fights, I think, and uh, he's showing some of that, but he's got the style. He's got the body, good body, good physique, and apparently he's in good condition. And got a good championship corner, so he's got everything behind him. He could make something of himself. Hey, break out, break out, clean, step back. Hey, Mark. Well, J.D. Brown and Ollie Dunlap call Joppy a overachiever. Come on, get him out, get him out, bring it, bring Guy's it. Guy's really been on. tenacious and worked hard in the gym. Well, it's showing here. Ooh, combination by Tony. Two good shots hey, by Tony. Out, Very seldom do you see him yeah. land two shots. I think that's the first time I remember it. I think so. I mean, good shots, two good shots together. Come on, get those guys out of there, guys. Break out, come on, break out, come on. Let me for holding Final second of the tenth round. Time. That may be the first round that Tony won in a long time. Get some tape on the left. Get some tape on here, right? Perfect Good round. round. One guy can work on round. Now. Perfect round, baby. Good round. That's what we want. Okay. See? Good chance now. Okay. Four rounds there. Take some deep breath. Eleven rounds coming up. Okay. Okay. okay what you have to do? You have to just. Work hard these two rounds. Jam, I want those flurries that will work on the gym, okay? Mm -hmm. I want them flurries, you know, every 30 or 45 seconds, okay? okay. I want you to keep, you need. I want you to keep jabbing, okay? Keep working with that jab. All right, let's take a look at when Tony finally gets a little on track. See, that was a right hand that was great. I mean, that was great. If he had a lot of power to it, it should have carried him into the seats. And, uh, of course, there, there are times there, you see, see that? <laughs> Boy, Joffy, Joffy must have one hell of a good chin. I'll say that. That was a shot to carry you away. Well, you know what I don't hear is any desperation in the corner. It's not like somebody's telling them, hey, we need a knockout to win. You got two rounds. You better put everything together. If you want this championship, you better go out and get it. There's a, a sort of bemused unexcitement about the thing in the corner. William Joffy goes into the 11th round for the first time in his career. Rodney Tony, for the second time in his career, his, his only loss was in the 12th to Quincy Taylor, a uh, knockout in January of 95. Yeah, well, you know, as we've been saying, we, we see a lot in Joppy. He's, he's 19 and 0, he's a young guy, he's learning, he's an overachiever. He can come into championship competition. I don't think he's ready for a real championship competition right now. I think he needs three or four or five of these kind of fights where he has to really work the whole 12 rounds. And uh, then he's ready to step up. He has the class and he has the skill and technique. Uh, you know, he had, certainly has the patience to hang in here where the guy's hard to fight. And if he looks back at this fight, he sees that when he's throwing more than one punch, when he's putting together a five punch combination as he has on several occasions, that's where he'll see he's effective. And that's when the other guy doesn't do anything to you. And again, it's a one punch try each time by Tony, whereas Joppy much break busier break break in break the out. number of punches break out, break out. and more efficient in the way he has scored. Well, you know, if Joppy lets this guy crawl back into the fight by taking the next two rounds, then he may have a problem with scoring. You don't know how the, how the uh, judges have looked at this. I mean, it, it hasn't been an inspired fight, and so it depends on what you're looking at. I mean, we've been looking at Joppy's excellence and style and so forth, and uh, Tony's trying, but 
Now, in this round, he's and as in the last one, he's wilding away the round, letting the guy take it. And uh, that doesn't make any sense. He's not that far ahead. Quick little combination by William Joppy. And now again, Tony right, with the combination. Up, break up, break up, get, him out, get him out of there. Joe Cortez, third man in the ring. Tony lands a left. Joppy's punch hit the side of the arm. Oh, well, Tony won't much do damage there. No, but don't think it doesn't hurt. <laughs> you hit the duck towards real hard, you can't lift your arm for a while. A hard, hard punch up there does hurt him then. He's got to come back up. Right, try to out, win this on. round. Come on, bring well, Joppy has scored more often in this round, but it isn't an overwhelming lead. Corner trying to get Joppy working for the last 30 seconds of the round. You're right. All right, get this out of there. Tony hanging in there. Time. One round to go. And I would think that unless Tony knocks him out, the NAF, NABF belt will belong to Joppa. You think? Too much. Don't try to do it with one punch, okay? One punch is not going to do it. Have to be combinations. Come on, man. He gets close to you, Riley. Dig up under him, man. Okay? Come on. You want it? Come on. Okay. Okay, go get him. Go get it. You want it? Go get it. Go get it. Tony would have been better off throwing combinations all night long. Yeah, unfortunately, that, that advice is coming a little bit too late. Twelfth and final round for the NABF middleweight title, Rodney Tony and William Joppy. Joppy with a seemingly large lead on the scorecards, but you never know. And Joppy getting busy. Let's see if both fighters let it all hang out here in the 12th. Well, Tony certainly is. Tony's come out and, and paid attention to what his corner told him. Except nobody told him he needed a knockout. Good Except double jab needs. by Joppy. Break! Break out, break out, break out. Break out, come on, come on. Tony looks off into his corner to try to get more advice. But he's got to focus at the task at hand. I hate fighters that look into the corner. <laughs> right hand landed by Tony to the head. Tony from the same stable as Terry Mar Norris, but it doesn't look like he's going to join him in the winner's circle tonight. Unless he pulls out a miracle here. Let, 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 the let only let miracle let could let be let a knockout, let me, let me although I do not hesitate to remind the audience that we are in the Bermuda Triangle of Judges. Anything can happen. We have him comfortably ahead, but it may not be necessarily so. Let Break out clean, step back. Joe step Cortez back, back, back. separating the fighters. Less than a minute to go in the fight. Tony's got to find a bomb somewhere. Ho, ho, ho. Joppy continues to be the aggressor. Crisp jab. Landed by Tony. Break out, break out, break out, break out. Step back. I'm sorry, landed by Joppy. Time Get called by referee Joe Cortez. 
There's some tape. The tape is loose on the left glove. Now they'll just wind it around and get that back. And Tony will return. Okay. Let's go. Time back in. Jaffe leaning forward. Oh, nice right hand by Tony. Nice right hand by Tony. And a solid body, body blow by Tony. Final 10 seconds of the fight. Too little, too late for Tony. Good fight, guys. Good fight. So the NABF middleweight title fight in the books. And it looks as though William Joppy has prevailed. It does. It was an inspired uh, day, uh, fight, and it was um, sort of a, a guy that's got a great deal of technique against a guy that doesn't have any and looking for a knockout that didn't come. So but pretty good heart on the part of Tony. Well, we know it's late on the east side of the country, and a decision should be forthcoming very shortly. This title vacated by Quincy Taylor, and in just a couple moments, it'll be the Rodney Tony or William Joppy proudly wearing the belt. Yeah, and it, uh, it came at uh, a great deal of cost for both guys because it took a long time to get to 12 rounds to figure this one out. I mean, God, that was a long 12 rounds. But, Ferdy, you have to admit, you said Tony doesn't have the skill. He certainly has the heart. He, hangs, yeah. he hung in there very tough. No, no, he's a good good fighter as far as uh, uh, hard as concerns, as far as being able to stand there and punch with somebody. If somebody stands still, I think he'd take him right out of there with that punch. But uh, so happened to Jaffe, uh, much more skillful. It looks like Jaffe is ready to stop, step into much better contention. And uh, that's the way you see it. So All right, home, Jim Lennon Jr. standing by with the official announcement. Brother Mark, what's up? Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing here at the Mirage, here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Art Lurie scores the bat 116 to 112 in favor of Rodney Tony. Judges at ringside, Dave Moretti and Al Siciliano both score the bout 114 to 114, even a draw. The decision is a majority draw. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a half for both of these fighters putting up a great fight? Rodney the Punisher, Tony, and William Joppy. Oh my, a majority draw. What did I tell you? We're in the, we're in the Bermuda Triangle of Judging. Well, that's the way that goes. And there was actually one judge who had it, Art Lurie, 116 to 112 for Tony. <laughs> so Joppy just got by with the two 114 to 114 score to just get the majority draw. So William Joppy, who I thought, and Ferdy, you certainly thought, was well ahead with especially his scoring in the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth rounds, ends up with a majority draw. I'm lucky to get it. Well, apparently the judges were just looking at a guy that throws one hard punch and lands rather than rather than a guy that likes to box and knows how to get around. Uh, it's It certainly is a bewildering end to a, a, a night filled with good fighting. And Tony did throw a lot of bombs in that fight, but very rarely did he follow up with a with a combination. And very rarely did he land in the in the bombs. And the surprise is that it happened so often. I mean, just let's have one night without one of these shocking surprises. But it doesn't seem like we're able to. You said we're in the Bermuda Triangle, Ferdy, and, and there's another perfect example. Do you think there's any way Tony could have won that fight by four points? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's outrageous. But I've seen some many, many outrageous decisions coming out of here, and apparently we're going to keep seeing them as long as we've got the same judges. So the vacant NABF title is just that, still vacant. <laughs> the depressing news is they got to do this again if they're going to figure out who won. Can you imagine anybody paying to see this again? So it ends up as a majority draw. William Joppy now 19-0-1 as a pro. Rodney Tony 21-1-3. Three. three draws in his professional career. And it will be these two guys again that'll have to fight for the belt.
Yeah, they can't do anything else. It's a draw. They might as well have these two same two guys. All right, so at the Mirage in Las Vegas, Nevada, we return right now to Jim Hill. All right, thank you very much. Now let's recap the results of tonight's bout from here at the Mirage Grand Ballroom as it was an evening of title fights that featured two world championships. And it all started out with the little guys. The Latin American Junior Flyweight title was uh, fought here tonight, and it was the champion, Carlos Murillo. He retained the title.